Hello everybody, welcome to Let's Make Art. We like to watercolor. It's just some water and color mixed together on a paper. Technically, that is true. Technically, that's all that is. So today we are doing a pink pineapple. It's awesome. I thoroughly like this project. Al, not so much. Okay. I'm he, you know, I don't know if I trust him, but make him believe, comment, comment how much you love this project so I can prove him wrong. Cause I'm like, this is a great project. I'm telling you. <laughs> so we have five colors today that we're using. We are using honey brown, black, dandelion yellow, leaf green, and magenta. They're in these bottles. You have to press them down to get them to open up cause they're childproof. Okay. You look crazy when you did that. <laughs> did I? Because <laughs> you Because <were> <laughs> I had to, had to get a little so strength. It's your birthday today. You guys, I'm 29 today. That's pretty Happy exciting. Birthday. Thank you. September 7th, that's my birthday. Now you all know. It's great. Don't hack your bank account. <laughs> <laughs> I will not tell you my mother's maiden name. Okay, we are using two brushes today. We have around six and around two. These are my go-to brushes. They're fabulous. You're fabulous. Let's do this. You're such a great mood. I'm in the best mood. My husband's making me risotto tonight. I can't wait. So for our pineapple, we have four steps. So the first part is we are going to establish the shape and the shading of the bottom part of our pineapple. Uh, second step, we are going to do our leaves, which is this part here. Can you see uh, that? No, let me show them. Let me show the people. Show the people yeah. the leaves. Leaves. Third step, we are doing this background, which is I think probably one of the first times we're actually painting a background with our painting. And um, the last step is we are doing any extra shadowing. Details. Details. But I was like trying to switch it up, so I'm like, maybe extra shadowing, but it's essentially details, so. It's fine. No, I know. <laughs> Al knew it, you knew it. We all knew it. <laughs> Let's get started. Now, if you are new to watercolor and you are not familiar with it at all, I highly encourage you to watch the live paint alongs because we do a warm up and I, I break it down a little bit more. So if you're brand new, take a look at those. We do lives Tuesday night, 715 Central Standard Time. Put it in there. <laughs> okay. I'm going to start with my round six and I'm just going to get it wet and then I kind of hit it off the side of my glass to get off that excess water. And I'm just going to take a little bit of honey brown and um, just add some water to it so it's a light wash. Usually when you're like outlining a shape or just kind of establishing where things go, you want to start with a really light wash um, because then you can just paint over it. But if you use a really dark color, then it's almost like um, it would be harder to cover up or paint over it if you need to. Also, I like to put my paints on the edges of my pans. Um, I put a little bit too much here. This is why that's blending together. <laughs> so if this happens to you, which it happens to me, you're in great company, just put a little bit less paint on your palette and they won't blend like put that. Less. Put a little bit. I didn't do very well, but at least you know you're not alone when that happens to you. Okay. So we're not doing the entire pineapple, we're just doing like the top part of the pineapple. So it's basically um, like the top part of an oval. And when you do the outline of your pineapple, um, try not to do a totally smooth line because pineapples are um, um, sharp. Yeah. They're... Textured. Textured. Pointy. Pointy. <laughs> All of these words. All of these words are great words. Pointy, textured, sharp, ridgy, rid, ridge. Really? You get it. You get it. You get it. Um, also, you'll notice there's no outline for it, and that's because this painting is very loose. This is more about just having fun with watercolor. We kind of let things blend and bleed together and mix and all those things because I just feel like that's a party on a piece of paper, and that's what we're doing. <laughs> You're all invited. To you're, my all party. <laughs> you're all invited to my party on my paper. Sarah, okay. Are you trying to say there's a party in your paper? There is a party in my paper that you are invited to. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so I'm starting with 
my outline here. Um, I'm going to start probably like, what would you say? A third, a third over, maybe a quarter. Give me an angle. Just eyeball it. You, it's fine. Okay, and then I'm going to start, and when I make my pineapple shape, I'm going to like put in these little jagged things. So it's not like a smooth line. I'm doing kind of like, like points. And you can see I'm not doing like a whole hard line. I'm just giving myself an idea of the shape. We don't have to do a hard rigid line, just like, yeah, this is a pineapple shape. And then leave some space here at the top, empty, and um, go down the other way. Kind of make it, kind of make it rigid. And then you can adjust it from there. So looking at it, I'm like, okay, that's cool, but my pineapple's a little off center, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, you can adjust that. Just bring out your line a little bit more. There we go. Now it's more even. Yes? Right, Al? Looks super even. <laughs> <laughs> Looks really even. Okay. The other thing with pineapples is you all know they have those like triangle parts that like poke out and are... I really feel like I should have learned some <laughs> I really feel like I should have looked up some words for this. The skin? It's the outside of the pineapple. The shell. The shell. I feel like the everybody crust. knows what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. So instead of going in and painting like all those individual um, shapes, this is more of a loose interpretation. Um, we're just going to kind of establish some shadows. So I'm going to mix my honey brown with black to get a dark brown. And I'm going to start putting in, they're kind of like um, V's. And um, do them alternating, kind of like this. But this is just so we're, we're telling people that this is not a smooth surface, okay? There's lights and shadow going on within all of this. Okay. Wait, what color is that? Brown. This is a mixture of honey brown and black, so it's a darker color. And then you are going to rinse your brush, grab some of that honey brown, and just start um, spreading. Spread the love. Spread the color. Blend it out. So I'm just getting my brush nice and wet, picking up a little bit of color, and spreading. Now you can see as I'm spreading that I'm not filling the entire thing with color, there are spaces here that are white. Um, and that is because whenever there's a shadow on something, which is what these Vs are, there's also going to be a highlight somewhere. So um, because this is just like a loose interpretation of a pineapple, we're not being too, super technical about it, but allow yourself to have some white areas here and there. And that's just to communicate the, um, the value change. We still want a value change. So we're just mixing, and you're going to get some different textures going on here. You're going to, some of it is going to kind of blend out. You're going to get some water spots. Embrace those. They're beautiful. That's what we want. And then what I'm going to do after it's all wet, this is still all wet from that wash I laid down. Now I'm going to go in and start just dropping in some more concentrated color of that honey brown. Now you can see I'm not doing it everywhere. I'm just doing it in some spots. See, I left a light wash there. I'm leaving a light wash there. That's because our goal here is to have a, a wide range of value. So we want really light areas. We want medium areas. We want dark areas. Just for kids. Just for funsies. Maybe I shouldn't say that. I'm 29 years old. You're a grown a woman. I'm a grown woman. I can't say fuzzies anymore. <laughs> okay, and the other thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move over to my dandelion yellow and drop in some bright spots of yellow. Because pineapples, gosh, if you look at them, they have some crazy color going on. They even sometimes have green in them. So if you want to do a little bit of green in there too, feel free, my friend. This is your painting. So I have some bright spots of yellow, so... Just dropping them here and there. So now I have this great like color range 
just from doing those different things, I'm like, man, I have some browns and I have some bright yellows. I have some great stuff going on here, you know? Did you go to the Dole Plantation in Hawaii? Yes, I did go to the Dole Plantation when I lived in Hawaii. That's not how you say it. <laughs> okay. We don't call it the Hawaii. No. <laughs> and uh, the, the pineapple whips? Oh. The pineapple whips at the Dole Plant. If you ever go to Oahu and go to the... Or Disneyland. They have Dole... Disneyland. <laughs> Or Disneyland. They have those pineapple whips that are just, it's just heaven. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put back in a little bit of that dark that I blended out when I was adding all those colors. So I'm mixing a little bit more black in. And just here and there, we're going to put in just some black, um, not pure black, so dark brown, I guess, shadows because we're communicating to who's ever watching this that there are like lumps and bumps and texture. Oh my. Oh my. Okay, and the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to put in this darker color here kind of at the top because when those leaves poke out from the top of this pineapple, which is our next step, um, the leaves themselves are going to be casting a shadow on the pineapple body. So right where they kind of poke out, we're going to put a darker color. And don't worry about getting it perfect right now because we haven't even put in our leaves yet. So just kind of more of a general shape. And remember, you can always adjust the shape as you're going. So like for me, I'm just like, you know what? I want a little bit more rougher spike texture here. Just add it. It's your life. It's your painting. It's you. Are you going to sing for us? Yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting for it. I think that's a No Doubt song, isn't it? No. I it's my life. I think. Is it? I thought it was Don't you song. forget. No, that's a No Doubt song for sure. Okay. Unless we're thinking of two different songs. Maybe. Which could be. You guys, we finished it's step one. Life. It's Bon Jovi. It's <laughs> oh yeah, that is Bon Jovi. That's not the song I was thinking of. <laughs> but maybe you need to sing it one more time? Nope. Oh, okay. Oh, sure. Al, look what you made me do. That's fine. You just plop it with a paper towel. You pick up that water drop. Okay. I love this mood. I don't know what you're doing, but have a birthday every day. Have a birthday every day. Okay, we finished step one. We established the body of our pineapple. Now we can totally go back to it later on, which we probably will in step four, which is our detail step. Uh, but for now, let's move on. All right, let's move on to the leaves. So when you do your leaves, what I like to do is I like to put, establish the shadow part of the leaf first, and then just use that same color to blend out and make the rest of the leaf. Now what you need to look at when you're looking at this pineapple, is all of these leaves are stemming from the same point, which is the center, okay? And then they branch out. So, right, kind of, you'll see right here that these dark values that I have going on in my leaves, they're all kind of in the middle, middle, and then they blend out. So as you go in to make your shadows, keep in mind that they're gonna be more in the center and then on the bottom part of the leaf. Okay? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna Okay, so I'm gonna grab my leaf green and a little bit of black since it's gonna be the shadowed part of the leaf. And then what you're essentially gonna do is you are basically, basically going to make um, just like dark chunks. I'm trying to explain it before are I we paint on step it. Two? We're on step two, you guys. We're on leaves. I said it though, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to do uh, like a dark swoosh here. This is the bottom of a leaf. And then on this side, this is a bottom of a leaf. So they're kind of like curves, like a, gosh, I really should get more familiar with shapes. <laughs> okay, but you guys get it. You can see what this looks like. 
And then um, I'm gonna do another one, and then this one's gonna kinda like branch out this way. Now I know what you're thinking. Sarah, this doesn't look like a leaf. It will, okay, it will. So just, just follow along with me. This one's kind of po poking out. Okay, and then I'm gonna show you how we're turning this into leaves, okay? So I'm gonna rinse my brush, and just using this color that's here, I make my leaf shape. Now pineapple leaves are super funky, okay? So don't stress about the actual shape of your leaves because they poke out, sometimes they go straight up, sometimes they like go down like this. So you're basically just going to be making um, these different leaf shapes and the bottom part is just going to be dark. That's what we want to remember. The bottom part and where it meets in the center, that's where our darkest value is. Now you can see this is a very loose painting. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be. So let yourself just kind of have fun with the different brush strokes and be like, you know what? That's a great leaf right there. I'm happy with that. You can make them a little bit thicker. The thing you want to keep in mind with these leaves, though, is that they get narrower, narrow, narrower as they go out. So we kind of like a little tip on them. And then as I get more up in the middle, these are going to kind of just like branch out. So I'm just taking the color that's already there and blending it out. Just like that. And then you start over, you go in, you put your shadows in again. And remember, you can repeat this a few times and after you blend, you might have to go back in after it dries for a second and put your shadow back in. That's totally normal, so don't stress about that. And then if you want the leaves to be overlapping, you just paint over it. So let's say I want this leaf to kind of come out this way. I'm just gonna paint over what's already there. But just keep working it. This project is really more about just loose and you know crazy brush strokes and just like getting used to the brush, I like to use, when I do these leaves, I like to use the side of my brush because I get a broader brush stroke. And then I'm gonna do another one here. So I kinda just like build it up. And then as it gets more to the top, the leaves are gonna get a little bit smaller and they're gonna go straight up. So it's almost like it goes like this, like the top leaf of the part like branches out and then the shape goes up. And some of these are gonna blend out a little bit as we add our background. I think that's a fun part to it. And if you want to do it opposite where you put the, your leaf first and then put the shadow, that's totally cool too. Both of those ways work. I don't think that either way is wrong. It's whatever feels right to you. And then you're just going to kind of like keep on going until it feels full. Like I'm looking at mine right now and I'm like, okay, I'm missing one right here. I need one here. And then I also need ones down here because I feel like this how this protrudes out of the pineapple is a little bit off. Because the thing that we have- a coconut with a hat. <laughs> Thanks, Al. <laughs> <laughs> the thing we also have to remember is these leaves, um, they're, it's a three-dimensional object, so there's also some that are gonna be coming out at us. And for those, I kind of just like put in, kind of like this way. So they're a little bit shorter. Like if you painted the sunflower with us, it's the same idea, that foreshortening, the ones that come out at us are a little bit shorter. And then I'm putting like the bottom shadow on some of these that lost it a little bit. So they dried for a second. I can go ahead and put in some shadow. Okay, now I'm going to put this leaf in here. 
and it's okay to just paint right over it because the great thing with watercolor is it's transparent so we can still see the one behind it through it but I think that's cool um, I'm not super concerned about um, you know creating that light and shadow between there and then just wherever it's looking empty just add another little spike it's kind of Medusa-y but I feel like that's true for pineapples Scientists have often believed that that was the first name for a pineapple was the Medusa plant. Yes. That's a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> what if we just said stuff like that with such confidence? We would probably get a billion comments that are like, um, no. <laughs> it's a trapezoid. <laughs> it's a trapezoid. You're like, no, it's not. Okay. I got my pineapple. Um, all, everybody's leaves are going to look different because this is just a loose painting, but I'm, I'm just telling you guys, this is just about fun. This is just about letting the things blend together. This is about maybe letting your things get a little bit funky. That's the fun part of it. That's where you can really let loose and you kind of take off the, the pressure you have of yourself to create this like masterpiece, you know, sometimes it's just about having fun. So I did my leaves. I'm gonna let those dry for a second. And then um, after they dry, I'll put some shadow back in. But until then, we're gonna do step three, our background. Yay! Al, I'm looking for some sort of excitement. Uh, I'm thrilled. <laughs> I'm thrilled. And another thing that you guys can do um, is you can always crop your um, painting too. So let's say like, like a lot of times I just like cut it off. I did the same thing where the bottom of my pineapple kind of looked like this and I just cut it to like here. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So feel free mm. to crop your own painting. It's your painting. You can do whatever you want with it. Okay. Now I'm going to put in my background. Now my background is like a light pink peachy mixture. mixture. So I'm grabbing some magenta 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 and a little bit of yellow but just a little bit of yellow because if i do too much yellow it's going to turn orange so just a little bit of yellow and water we're using lots of water for this one if you're afraid of your paper warping because of how much water we're using then go ahead and tape it down just using painter's tape um, but mine is kind of glued into my notebook here so i'm fine I'm just going to go. So what I like to do is I get a lot of water on my brush. I pick up some of this light pink yellow mixture. Do I need to move this in more? And I just start on the right hand side. I put in the color and then just using water, I just smear it out and around. And I mix it as I go, which is why my colors slightly ch change, shift as I go around. Things like that don't bother me. If they bother you, then mix a lot at the beginning. So then you can just pull from that same color as you're going. So I put in color. And then working rather quickly, I just use water and spread it out. Now the reason why you want to work quick is if you don't, then those brush strokes are going to stay so if you want them to kind of blend out to where you don't see those exact brush marks when you first lay down, then you just want to work fast. And you can see just by blending in and like putting water here, I'm starting to get some super interesting watercolor textures. And that's just part of it. That's just accidental art. That's just what happens when we paint with water and color. It's really exciting. I, I actually love it. <laughs> And um, I'm going all the way to my leaves on some of them. Some of them I'm leaving a little bit of a white space. When you go all the way to your leaves, the green is gonna bleed out a little bit. Embrace it. This is, this is a messy, loose painting. This is what it's supposed to do. And I think it really just kind of adds to the, to the texture of it, to the feel of it. 
And then if you ever need to, you can always go back in and drop in a little bit more color if you feel it's looking a little bare. You can always drop in water too. If you want some more of that really interesting water texture, go ahead and do a few droplets of water. You're mad. <laughs> I'm mad? You've lost your mind. <laughs> Have I? Al? No, I Isn't haven't. It? And just keep going, just keep making your way around. And the fun thing with this project is you're, we're doing multiple techniques here. We are blending, we're dropping in water, we're dropping in color, and we're just letting it spread out. So if you need a project to kind of like get used to watercolor and what it can do, this is a great project. Sometimes we get like and even me working on projects, I, I'm so careful and I'm so precise, precise and I'm using, you know, tiny brushes and I'm doing all of this super tight detail work. Um, but I kind of lose the fun of just playing. So that's why I like to do kind of a combination of projects, of subjects, because sometimes you need paintings where you're like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna let loose. I'm gonna let this go. I'm not going to care. Like if we're looking at some of my leaves, they probably look a little bit ugly. I don't, Ooh. I'm, <laughs> but I mean like, you know what I mean? But it's, it's not about that. It's just about like the feel of this painting, which is, this is active and this is loose. And this is, we have crazy interesting textures going on. And, um, it's just about that fun. Cause sometimes as adults, we lose that, you know? I mean, I'm 29. <laughs> I'm no longer a little kid. <laughs> You're almost 30. I'm almost 30. I got a pretty good life. Okay, background, done. And look how cool this is, you guys. Look at these, look at these areas that are just like, did I mean to do that? No, it just happened. It's amazing. <laughs> But this is legit why I love watercolor so much because you just, I didn't go in and paint every single one of these dark ridges. I didn't paint these. You really didn't. I, I you, you guys saw, time. you just saw me do it. And that is why I think watercolor is so cool because it's just like that simple technique and it's like, bam, you have some super interesting things going on with your painting. That was step three, you guys. We're like almost done with this painting. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna like kind of tighten up our pineapple and our leaves a little bit more. So what I like to do is I'm gonna drop in some more of this like bright yellow just on top, just while it's dry. And as long as your pineapple's not too dark, which it, it shouldn't be if we're just kind of following along, um, I'm gonna, it should still show up, those kind of pops of color. And I'm actually gonna pour a little bit more brown on mine to get that nice honey color. Now on this one, I didn't leave as much white in it as I did on my example. If I were to do it again, I would probably be a little bit more aware of that. And that's a totally normal thing. You can paint things again, you can kind of be aware but I just wanna add a little bit more bright color and maybe a little bit more shadow, especially right underneath my leaves. Now that I have an idea of where my leaves are going, I can kind of go in and start putting in that dark shadow. And when you put in like a shadow underneath that, we're automatically creating like depth where that, it, that pineapple top is going away from us. And that's what we want. I'm gonna put in a little bit more dark shadows. Is this just black? Here? This is just black with a little bit of brown. And remember, of course, this is your painting. Maybe you don't like such high contrast in your pineapple and you don't really like those dark areas that much. Don't put them in. This is, this is your world that you're making. This is your pineapple. 
Oh wait, I gotta say my, uh, I'm gonna put drops of color in here because. You're forcing it. <sighs> you're right, you're right, you're right. Hold on, pause. I'm gonna go back to that. Okay, so I feel good about my pineapple. I have some great colors going on. I have good value, some nice whites and really dark darks. And now I'm gonna go in and kind of just shape my leaves a little bit more. So I'm gonna use a mixture of green and black, get that dark green again, and just kind of like where these leaves are coming into the center and the bottom part, I'm just gonna put in those shadows. What? You're crazy. What are you doing? What? Oh, you're so edgy. <laughs> Al, calm down. I live on the edge. That's what I always say. <laughs> and I know, um, that you might be scared to put such dark color on your painting, but it's just a painting. It's just color and water making marks on a paper. That's all it is. So sometimes you just gotta like work yourself up to it and be like, you know what? There's a shadow right there, bam, and that's it. And then you can rinse your brush and kind of blend them out just a little. We don't wanna blend them all the way out to where they're totally gone. And then kind of right here where these leaves are kind of poking out of this middle here, I'm going to kind of put in some shadow in there so we have a little bit more idea of where they're kind of coming out from. And maybe one here. Maybe you want to re 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 <laughs> rework some of your leaves. Totally feel free to. But remember, this is just this is just loose, and this is just fun, and this is just playing. And maybe you do the first one loose and and fun like this, and then maybe you want to do a second one that's a little bit more um, tight. That's great. Now the only color that we didn't use in this is um, blue, but if you have our subscription box and you have that bottle of Tahoe blue and you want your leaves to be a little bit more of the blue green, bust that out, put it in there. I think it would look great. Put a little shadow underneath here. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna adjust my pineapple a little bit more it's going down, like it's rounding down here, and I want it to be a little bit more elongated. So I'm just gonna adjust the sides to where it's not rounding down. Now I could have either just chopped that off, or I can just make it a little bit thicker at the bottom, and that way it doesn't feel like such a circle. It's gonna give my pineapple the longer shape that those pineapples have. Such a circle. <laughs> okay. You guys, we did it. That was it. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this project. I really did fight for this one, so I hope you guys like it too. <laughs> and you prove me right. Um, please share your work. You can put it on our Facebook group. We have a Facebook called Let's Make Art Together where everybody shares their work and we're you know, encouraging and um, I was gonna say words of encouragement. Those are the same thing, <laughs> but you get what I'm saying. So share it, um, post it on Instagram. You can tag us in Let's Go Make Art. And um, if you have any questions, come at me with them on Tuesday night at 7.15 Central Standard Time where we paint this together. Um, I absolutely love this project. I, I just think it's the coolest thing. So hopefully you guys love it too. I can't wait to see how yours turn out. So please send it and share it with me. And that's it. Thanks so much. Bye. Okay, and next week, you guys, we are doing the piece de la... The, how do you say that? Creme de la creme. The creme de la the creme. Piece de la creme. The <laughs> Anyways, it's a flamingo with the floral crown. You're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. It's so fun. Watch out for that.
Bye.